What is up you guys? You're watching Sergio's Secrets. Thank you, thank you so much for watching this video here with me. I parked my car. <laughs> no puedo hablar. I took my seatbelt off and I have a Starbucks that I just got and I decided today why not film a little Q&A. So a couple days ago I asked you guys, feel free to ask me cualquier pregunta and I will be answering it. So I'm here in the parking lot. Today has been a little bit like all over the place. So um one of the mis se me poncho, so I had to like take my car to the shop and I literally just got my car and now I'm gonna go probably go get a, do a car wash after this video if not tomorrow like in the morning but anyway I post some of the greatest selling so if you're ever in the spending mood I'll leave all the links down below hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up and I post very very frequently on this channel so if you want to see more videos by Sergio Secrets fashion and contemporary um, go ahead and subscribe so you never miss any one of my uploads and yeah we're just gonna get started with this q and I get asked so many questions more and more my DMs and everything get flooded it like gets flooded I get a lot of messages but I love it and I try to respond 100% the most I can but sometimes I don't have the chance but I try to at least try to get back to everybody I say I really really appreciate everybody that takes time out of the day to send me a message so we're about to go to my archives and we're gonna be looking at some of the questions that I got asked so I'm so excited to be going through all of them right here and we're gonna be answering them so we're just gonna go ahead and start from the bottom to the top. So I guess the people that ask the questions first. Um, so the first question that I got asked, and it, hopefully in this video you get to know a little bit more about me and kind of a little bit more of the backgrounds. Um, I may not disclose every everything and I will um, be telling you why throughout the questions and you know, just why in general. Should I move my camera maybe to like, para que me queda poquito más sol? And the glasses that I'm wearing are my Givenchy ones that I got on sale from Nordstrom for like $120. And then I'm using my Prada Multi Pochette. And I, because it's like, siempre me preguntan que bolsa estoy usando por el día. I think I want to move, guys, so you guys can get a little bit of a better view. Maybe, allegedly. Let's see. Hopefully, my camera does not fall down. Yeah, I like this a lot better, so I think we're going to end up doing this. Yeah. This question is. Do you work or just shopping? Yes, guys, I do have a job and I've been at this place for a while, um, but I do have a job. I always get asked if YouTube's my full-time job or like what are uh, my streams of income. Um, I will say I'm very grateful to say that YouTube is a pretty decent income um, and I'm forever grateful for that and that's something that I will never take for granted and that's why I post videos all the time that's why I'm very very consistently I create more relationships with more people and so yeah I do have a job so the person said do you work or just shopping um, I love to shop but I do have a job so one is Arias content in Espanol so I get asked a lot this if if I should make like a Spanish channel or I should make like videos in Espanol. So if that's something that you guys are interested in, um, I wouldn't be supposed to doing it. I think it'd be something fun. Now, I probably wouldn't make a full channel right now. That's something that could happen in the future. But I wouldn't mind posting like a, a Spanish video once a week or like 90% Spanish. Pero mi español no está 100% correcto. Um, so when people tell me what language I speak, siempre le digo que hablo Spanglish. Porque um, a veces mi inglés está very improper y a veces mi español también improper. So whenever I don't know how to say something, I just kind of bounce off from those idiomas. So that's how I am. So if si hago un video en español, I probably will have like a lot of like errors in the way I kind of say things. They may sound a little weird. But if you guys are okay with that and you know, you guys can always correct me. I tell my friends all the time, y si digo algo malo correcto en inglés o en español, por favor correct me. Like I literally don't get mad at anything you're doing me a favor. So if you do want to see content in Spanish and what type of content, definitely let me know down below. What I got is a first bag ever purchased. So my first bag ever, ever, ever purchased from Contemporary was this Coach camera bag. And I remember I bought it and it was, it was on sale. And it was like when I bought it, it was like the most amount of money I've ever spent on anything. I think I was like 13 or 14. I remember when I had it, you cannot tell me anything. Like I just felt like i just felt like 
it opened a new world of like expressing myself into just it, it just brought so much joy in that bag from coach I, it was monogram it was coated canvas it had a thick strap and i just loved loved love love that bag so it brings back a lot of memories and that one was my absolute first first bag is from coach and i think a lot of people their first bag is from coach and for me i will forever be a coach customer but that is my f my first bag and for designer my first bag was this louis vuitton bag so in high school i worked at chick-fil-a and i would sell like candy yes guys i would literally think i would have my mochila with that so i would have my backpack and then i would have a duffel bag and in my duffel bag i would literally sell candy guys and i had like the square and everything and i would take people debit cards and teachers would buy stuff and, and i would use their credit cards like i would just you know I would hustle so 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 much and I remember I bought the bag from Fashion File and I, this is so embarrassing but I feel like who cares like I mean nunca me da casi tanto vergüenza because like it's real life and you know who cares because at the end of the day you see how far you've, you've came so the bag that I got from Louis Vuitton had a monogram in it and it wasn't my monogram so I would always carry it the other way around so um, I remember one time my teacher was like Who's, whose initials are those and I'm like oh they're nobody's but it was because I bought the bag from Fashion File for $800 I remember it, it was 20% off and then back then um, like I think every four, every couple every 21 days the bag had another markdown so I waited till the bag had the next markdown and that's when I bought it and that was the um, I think I did like a one day ship because I wanted it so bad and it had somebody's initials on it but hey I wanted the bag I was super happy I was super grateful so then instead of carrying a backpack I would carry my laptop a small folder with like my homework and the things that I really needed and then a duffel back to sell candy at school to kind of fund that little lifestyle because I then I wanted a camera and then I wanted you know other things here and there and then I also took my Louis Vuitton back to Chick-fil-a and I liked that bag because you could lock it because I would have a lot of cash because I would sell candy right so I, during during my lunch at my Chick-fil-a there was like a chase right there so I would like walk to chase and deposit all my cash that was my first designer bag was that Louis Vuitton and then my first kind of contemporary was the coach bag but hopefully you guys that little story because I don't know like if I would have started my channel and I would have told you that guys that I would have like I would have been like oh my god but now I, I just like to be super transparent and um, I like to be honest about a lot of things so that was kind of my kind of first bags next question is why am I so awesome I really don't know I, I just really tend to be myself and I tend to stay by myself a lot and I'm not really a type of person that is like more about like my mom always says like don't be a follower so I wouldn't say like I'm a follower I just kind of stay in my own lane and I open my own doors for myself and I do things for myself I don't I just don't wait for things to op open in my lap you know what I mean so maybe that's why I'm awesome because I, I just do things whenever I want them and cuando yo quiero next question is what do I do for a living so this is something that I get asked all the time all the time so this is probably the only question that I don't feel comfortable answering and the reason is because there's a lot of people out there that are not happy that will love to see people lose and you know there's just like a lot of people that don't want the best for you so right now that's probably the only question that I would probably never talk about right now um, I like I said I've talked about previous jobs that I've done and things that I've done in the past but right now currently I don't feel comfortable doing that um, everybody knows like at my job that you know what I do everyone's super comfortable that I do YouTube channel and you know they, they feel super confident and they trust me they say you know you can post whatever we want because we see the way you are the way you carry yourself you're not going to do anything wrong so I like that I can I like that my employers know what I do and they don't really have a problem with it because if it's because if it's other employers or other places may people may give you the side eye or people could be jealous or people could you know be you know don't understand what even YouTube is or how it works so I'm grateful just to say that what I that I'm able to work a job fully and with absolutely no issues and that I'm also can do like YouTube and other things on the side without no issues and that my employer is okay with me doing stuff like that um, because I know a lot of um, employers don't like it when people work work on social media and do this and do that so I will say I'm very grateful because of that 
today that's probably the only question I will probably not answer I know I just said oh and you can ask me any questions that's probably the only one just because I don't want to ruin that and I work so hard to get to where I'm at so I don't really want to ruin anything like that um, a lot of people know what I do and if you know you know and you know it just keep it moving um, but if someone like ever starts like commenting it or you know being, like certain things I will have to delete those comments for security purposes there's certain things where I'm super picky and my job and my security within myself like alarm systems and stuff like that like those are just things that I've always taken very very seriously my safety and my job so those are probably the um, the things that I probably won't disclose right now in this part of my YouTube channel but it will be something that I do want to share and that I possibly one day could actually bring you along and show you how everything works so who knows guys maybe six months from now you'll see me oh come work with me and you get to see a day in my life so um, you never know hopefully guys understand where I'm coming from and that's something that I don't even have a problem showing with you but it's just it only really takes one person to ruin everything so I don't want to ruin things that I've worked years and years and put in so much time and energy and effort just so somebody can do something wrong in like five seconds and it, my hard work is gone so fortunately I won't disclose that right now the same person asked which uh, American card do you recommend platinum or gold so I have the gold card I have the rolled gold version of it and I have it right here so actually I lost my um, cards and so I, I thought when I reordered the card I was gonna get the um, the gold card like but they ended up giving me the same rolled gold card which I'm very appreciative of but I prefer right now I like the gold card because you know that ten dollar dining credit and I like to eat at Shake Shack so I do get ten dollars so that's hundred and twenty dollars and then the travel credit for a hundred so I do use the the value of it so for me it's like you know you pay two fifty a year for the card but one twenty in Shake Shack and the rest in those travel credits and then I also I, I get a lot of points because honestly I will be really honest my American Express and my Chase Sapphire are probably the only cards that I really use and so with my American Express like every kind of quarter or so I can get like a hundred dollar gift card to like last time I got one from Nordstrom and I can get one from coach so if I get like four hundred dollars with a credit gift cards too I mean that's worth it so I personally um, prefer the gold card I think the platinum I do like it and I do see myself eventually getting it but five hundred fifty dollars that is a little bit out of um, my price range that's kind of that's insane amount of money to spend on a membership I know it has like the fees and everything just kind of like I know has like benefits kind of like the gold card right now but for me for my lifestyle I think the gold card works a lot better so if I were to pick one I would pick the gold card because I've had it for over a year. I literally got charged like the um, membership fee for $250. And when I said I was like, uh, it hurt a little bit. But I knew at the end of the day, the perks outweigh the cost of it, the opportunity cost. So guys, the kind of lighting is off now. So I don't know if I want to go back home and finish the Q&A just because the sun is setting and I want to make sure it's the best quality so I think I'm just going to go back to my studio in, at Anshins because I do get a lot and by the time I get to finish it the sun will definitely be down. Guys, I am back now in my little studio so I'm going to be answering the rest of the questions. Um, like I said, I was going to do it on my car but the sun was setting and I want to make sure you guys can kind of see me a little bit more and yeah, and if you hear my dog around the background, it's because he's right here I tried to put him in his kennel when we saw Yorando, 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 and I felt so bad. So he's just right there, just chilling. So if he moves around a little bit, it's porque son sus little pap patitas in the um, on the floor. So the next question is, what would be your dr your future dream purchase? So my future dream purchase, honestly, is going to be a new vehicle, an either a home or. That's pretty much it. I think those are the two next goals that I want to do. Um, I know I am going to be buying a new car at the end of the year. When I mean new, I mean I don't mean like going to the dealership and buying a brand spanking new car, a uh, new to me car. Um, for me, I just want something that's like um, maybe like a 2017, 2018 um, car. Car that's a little bit more bigger to have a little bit more space. So I think that's my next big, big purchase is a new vehicle. And most likely I will pay and effectivo so I don't think 
Um, so yeah, so that's probably my next big purchase is going to be a car So if you get the next big big purchase before the end of the year or the last one of the year is going to be a new vehicle um, I just want a new car that could kind of take me all over um, Texas so I can do kind of different vlogs and stuff like that. So um, at the end of the day YouTube is my passion I love to do YouTube videos. So um, I think it would be a really great investment to invest um, uh, Best in a car. I wouldn't get like a Mercedes or a Lexus or anything like that for me that doesn't make um, financial sense for me to purchase something like that I mean I could if I wanted to but I don't like to stress about certain things so for me I think I'm just gonna get um, not necessarily like a generic but just like an easy simple car that can take me to point A to point B and yeah so that's probably gonna be my next purchase question is how does it feel now to have 25k to when you started so um, it feels I don't know like me as a person I think I've grown a lot um, through myself but as far as like my integrity and everything is lo mismo I still have the same core values I still do things um, the same way and I don't get kind of caught in between the lines of this whole YouTube thing because I see where when people grow they do change a little bit and you know change is always good but don't do a full 360 don't become somebody else you know become the person you always are meant to be but like the same version like just an updated or elevated version of yourself not a completely different person um it feels really really good I feel now I can tell people I'm a youtuber um so I don't know I, I like it so much and I'm glad to say that this kind of hobby is starting to turn more into something else and I'm super super excited to see the future on my channel who knows where it could be you know you know what the crazy thing is like four months ago I had 15,000 subscribers and now I have 26 and it's just gonna keep on growing and growing and growing as long as I put in content effort I think um, the views and I think people are gonna be watching and engaging the most and I do everything with my integrity and I do everything the right way I think it will it's it, it it's gonna have to be successful you know what I mean when, when you put so much into something you're bound to get something in return so um, it feels really really great I still feel like the same um, I still do and carry myself the same way I may have become a little bit more professional throughout you know when I first did start my YouTube channel there are a little bit of few videos that are private and I did swear a little bit more I did say certain things and so for me I just um, I like to carry myself in a very classic and sophisticated way so you know who I was three years ago when I was in high school um, isn't the same person that I am now but yeah it's, I still feel the same and it feels really really great and I can't believe that I'm an actual youtuber now and that I get recognized like I got recognized every single time in like and I'm in a shopping mall or something I always get recognized and um, we, I always usually have conversations with people and um, yeah I, I just I love it so much and I never take anything like that for granted so um, it does feel really really good and then the same person asked one thing that you would recommend to a starting youtuber is to um to find your niche definitely you need to find your niche so for me talk about handbags and accessories and clothing that are more in the contemporary and designer um, space and there's not really a person like that now on this platform so that's kind of my niche on this platform so you have to find your niche and what you like to talk about when you're passionate about and kind of stick with that yes you could do a little bit videos out and about that are a little bit different so for me i do i do do a little bit of financial videos or i do talk about like you know like jc like that jc penny video that i did that didn't get a lot of views but i was still passionate about it but for the most part i stay in my own niche and that's honestly the thing that i would recommend i wouldn't get too too in the niche like let's say just only talk about handbags in a video i would just talk about a little bit of everything that's kind of in that kind of cut Category. So like ready to wear shoes, how to save for the item, what's a good buy, um, sell, you know, stuff like that. So that's kind of my niche. And so I would just recommend stay within your niche, do videos out and about bouncing off, just see how they would do. But I would honestly stay in your niche and post very, very consistently. YouTube is very saturated and I get a lot of people in my real life asking me, Sergio, yo quiero hacer videos on YouTube. And you know, and I go into their channel and they ask me, it's like, what, what, what do you think I need to do to grow? And I'm like, well, you're posting first of all you're posting a video like once a week or once every two weeks and that's not good enough it's it's really not unless you get super lucky but for the most part you have to put out content very very consistently that's why i try to post anywhere from 
four to even six or seven videos a week. You know, there's week, there's times where I post a video every single day for a week. There's sometimes where I post maybe four or five. But for the most part, I try to be super, super, super consistent on YouTube because it just keeps on going and going and going. And the moment you kind of stop, it just kind of goes like this. So you always kind of have to stay in the realm. So I would recommend posting a lot. And I would also recommend finding your niche. And then I would also recommend stay true to yourself and try not to be somebody that you're not. So I, when I first started my YouTube channel, I did try to be somebody that I was it and um, you know I thought people weren't gonna watch me because I'm too boring or because I don't swear or because I don't act like other people my age like I thought you know people would only watch me if I wore you know like back then like in high school there was a time where I would buy clothing from Paxa and, and I would you know try to dress in you know a different way than what I am versus you know because in high school like I would get judged for wearing blazers and suits and trousers and designer handbags or contemporary handbags and I would always get judged because people didn't really like that I, for me I was always within myself but the moment that I felt that I would wear like Treasure magazine or Stuzy or like those brands that are like in Paxson or you know certain things I kind of felt like I lost my identity so I would just recommend um, be yourself find your niche and post consistently and you're bound to get some sort of results so that's what I honestly would recommend and um, if you do have any more questions um, about that question hit me a DM and I'm more than happy to give you more advice but yes and people always and like I said people always ask me um how did I start on YouTube you're just blowing up no this was years in the making guys I have been wanting to be a YouTuber for the longest and I'm just now getting some of the paybacks I'm just now making um a little bit of a uh, decent income on YouTube I'm just now getting certain perks so I'm just now getting certain perks on YouTube so this is not something that was overnight that was in five videos this is something that I honestly worked so hard for so that's what I would say best friend Kimberly asked me where do I see where do I see myself in 10 years so in 10 years from now I want to be financially stable for the rest of my life or for most of my rest of my life I see myself either be see myself being in a relationship and if I'm not in a relationship I see myself adopting a child or having a child I feel like around kind of you know i would be 29 so maybe like when i'm 30 or 31 i may want to be a father by then and i probably want to have like four children or five children and the reason is because i had a teacher in high school and he had like six kids or seven kids i'm like oh my god what do you have seven kids and he said well there's a lot of people that don't know how to raise their children so i decided to have as much children as i financially can so i can teach them right and i can teach them you know so they can be good human beings in this world and i think that's so true and i feel like i'd be a really really great father so uh 10 years from now i definitely would probably see myself being a father maybe not for children right then and they're one-on-one -on -one. i would probably have them two by two so two back to back and then wait like five years and then have two back to back so i see myself um definitely being financially stable especially if i want to have children and having children and um to be happy and to be healthy so those are probably some of the things and as far as materialistic maybe maybe have my house paid off and maybe have another investment property or investment properties um that's where i see myself in 10 years from now but yeah people always ask me do you want to have children i honestly i i feel like it would be a learning process but I, at the end of the day i do want to have children i want to have like I said, like my teacher said, you know, there's a lot of people that are, aren't good. I may do two adopted children back to back and then two biological or biological adopted. I really don't know how the process would be, but I do want to have children be doing more giveaways. Yes, guys, I will be doing more giveaways at 30,000 subscribers. I will be doing another giveaway. So right now I have about, well, let me check exactly right now how many subscribers I have. I have um, 26.6 thousand subscribers so i give it like maybe three weeks before i hit 30 or maybe four weeks so you'll be seeing another giveaway and maybe um every single milestone that are a little bit baby steps i will be doing more and more giveaways because i always love to give back to you guys um the next question is is youtube your full-time job no it is not my full-time job i do have a full-time job on you know i do have my own job where i dress up i drive to work i do the whole thing um but youtube is not my full-time job um but i will say i am making enough for it to be a part-time job so for me i i do youtube like it's a hobby for me if i didn't get paid and i'm being really honest because a lot of people won't even say this some people were saying if i don't get paid i wouldn't be on youtube even if i didn't make a single penny if my youtube channel got demonetized tomorrow 
I would still be posting videos because at the end of the day, I love doing YouTube. M me making money off of YouTube is just a perk. But for me, if my YouTube channel honestly got demonetized, I will still be posting videos because I genuinely, it's my passion. I love interacting with you guys. I love meeting you guys. Like, I just love the whole, the whole experience, everything that comes with it. I love it. I never take it for granted. Who knows? In the future, you know, YouTube or working in social media could be a possibility where I, I, it's lucrative enough for me to make it full time. But right now, um, I still have my nine to five job. And then I do YouTube kind of on the side as a hobby. I wouldn't even consider it like a part-time or anything because for me, I don't see YouTube as a job. I see it as something that I love and I have so much passion. And I, like if YouTube was a real life person, I would give it a big hug. So yeah, it is not my full-time job. My biggest pet peeve. My biggest pet peeve is it really bothers me, guys. Like I'm a very chill. If I don't like a certain environment, I will not be in that environment. La mera verdad. The only people that I, the only biggest pet peeve that I can see is when I meet people that are so like cocky that are so like se están bien creídos like um a couple like a couple weeks ago i was hanging out with my friends and we over this person's house i've never been inside this person's house before and estaba como bien creído like oh my god my parents do this i want to know everything about you how much do you make like just like so like straightforward but not even in a curious way just so he can up one up me so he asked me what my favorite brand was and i said oh i think my favorite brand for contemporary is definitely going to be like vince he said well vince is trash i don't know why you like that and you know it was just very kind of disrespectful and very rude i would never go up to somebody in their face and say that's trash like for me i'm not the biggest fan of my course but i would never tell anybody if i saw them in person and be like you're back from you're back from michael kors is trash like I would never say anything like that because that is so disrespectful and you don't know how some how somebody worked hard to get that item for all we know that could be their dream bag or their dream item or their dream car that's why I never um, look down upon people or I never do anything like that because you don't know their story you don't know their background so um, I just don't really like people que son bien pesados like stuff like that irritates me so much and I just like people that are just very chill with the flow like I'm not really a picky person like I'm just like you know I'm just kind of me you know and that's honestly my biggest pet peeve is when I meet people and they're me and como, like, me and creídos and like, I'm this, I'm that, like, you need to come back down to earth or, and if you don't humble yourself, God's gonna humble yourself. So, that's honestly my biggest pet peeve is personas when I meet them que son me and me and creídos, like, that's not even, that's not cute. Even if you are beautiful, you're attractive, you know, the way you are, um, it, that, it doesn't justify it, so... That's probably my biggest pet peeve. Are you satisfied with your style? I am not satisfied with my style, which is the next question. For me, I just I, I, I just looked at my wardrobe a couple days ago, and I want to do another wardrobe kind of cleans. I definitely want to be even more minimalistic and a lot more crisp. So I am like 7 out of 10 satisfied with my wardrobe. I just need to get rid of like certain items that I have emotional attachments with and things that I don't want to let go. But after I let go of all those items, um, I feel like I will be more satisfied with it. And I would say like 9 times out of 10, like I said, um, I like to kind of reach for the same things again and again and again. But uh, I'm somewhat satisfied with my style. It moves so fast because this video is literally going to be an hour long. So next pregunta is, do you purchase more feminine items or masculine? So my style is very, very androgynous. I will say maybe 70% of my style or items in my collection are going to be more women's items or women's skews. Um, I do have like men's items. Like all my workout clothes are like mostly men's because they fit a little bit better. Most of my shoes are men's style because I have a wider foot. It's honestly a very, very in between. But I will say I purchase more women's items in my collection. But like I said, I, I feel like my style is very unisex or very androgynous. Some days I may wear a full-blown suit and I may wear like a handbag with it and kind of balance it out. Or some days I may wear, you know, a beautiful kind of more feminine top that still looks good on my body shape and some very nice kind of... Um, tapered trousers and you know I may kind of mix it up with a backpack and a sneaker so I feel like it's very androgynous and every day it changes and honestly it's cuando me levanto la mañana what am I feeling that day and I like that in my collection I can wake up any day and I can be whatever I want I can do whatever I want and I'm glad that I have like people I'm surrounded with that don't need that don't have a problem with that and it should never be a problem like that you should be able to wear whatever you want to wear but I will say make sure whatever you do wear I know it's kind of getting off topic 
make sure it looks good on you because I know right now um, the reason why I'm not satisfied with my style is because I would buy things that were a little bit too small so I have like a few like blazers that are size 6 or a size 4 that don't really fit me and maybe I'm more of a size 8 so um, I will say like buy your size and make sure it all thick that it looks good on you. Love to see a series of styling different body shapes. Would you consider or body types? Would you consider it? Yes, I would consider it. Um, I don't know, guys. Would you want to see more clothing videos? I know a lot of people tend to like more of the accessories, but I would really love to do um, like bringing some of my friends along and going shopping and doing like a little mini transformation and bringing some of my friends that do like makeup and stuff and you know show them like tips or tricks. Like you know, okay, let's say like an example. Like let's say I bring a person named Maya and Maya maybe like. 6'2", and maybe she's like uh, 200 pounds, and we bring her and we see what she has in her wardrobe, and we kind of give her a little bit of a makeover. So that's something that you do want to see on my channel. Um, it wouldn't be like right now or in the next like month or two, but maybe around holiday, that could be a very, very fun series, like, or like towards like the end of the year, like, you know, New Year's resolution to kind of give people like a little bit of a makeover. So if you do want to see that, I think that'd be really, really nice. And I can already think about a couple of people, <laughs> including my uncle. I can bring my uncle. This one is, what's a good first designer bag to have or collect? So I actually have a video about my favorite designer handbags that you should buy your at your first time or your first designer handbag purchase. So I'll actually leave that video linked down below for you. Um, so if you are interested in knowing what my favorite picks are um, that video would be really really grateful because I give you like I think I put 10 options in that video and you can kind of pick and choose whichever one works for your lifestyle thoughts on Hermes I like Hermes but I'm not in love with Hermes I see their items they're very clean and cut and very kind of timeless for the most part but for me I I'm not there yet like I like the bags that I have in my collection would I add an Hermes bag in the future in the next six months, no. In the next year, no. In the next year and a half, no. Maybe in two or three years from now, I may add like an Hermes Birkin. But for me, I just see myself having like maybe a Birkin or two like in years down the road and maybe like a Kelly wallet or things like that. But right now, I'm not really focused on Hermes and Hermes isn't like my goal to get. Um, I have the Hermes belt. I'm satisfied with it. And I don't really see myself purchasing anything from Hermes anytime soon. Um, I don't know. I think for me, Hermes is... You know, I have my entire life to purchase Hermes items. And right now, I'm young. And I like to have so many different brands, so many different styles. And I feel like Hermes is something that I can visit later down the road so for me um the answer is no but i may purchase like maybe a birkin or a kelly um obviously i think i would go for a pre-loved one if we're being quite honest um from fat probably from fashion file so yes um that's probably my um thoughts on hermes i like it um but i don't it, it's not me right now so that's something that i would probably visit later down the road go shopping for me and sell it to me so I get asked this question so much. I get so many people from all over the world, like from India, from Canada. If you buy things or can you buy certain things for me and ship it to me on sale? I would love to do that, guys. But honestly, um, the way everything is set up right now, I don't feel comfortable, you know, if something gets lost or, you know, the way I have to file my taxes and everything. Um, I want to get certain things situated and maybe that's something that I may consider. I do buy things for my subscribers here and there, but it's very, very few far in between. I don't do it every single shopping trip or every other shopping trip. I do it maybe once a month, twice a month at most. And yeah, that's not something that I'm looking to do right now. But I do post a lot of the deals. And if you do want to see a good uh, places to buy um, items on designer items or contemporary items for good prices in the Dallas Fort Worth or in Texas definitely definitely let me know down below because I can do that video choose a one bag to carry for the rest of your life which bag would you choose so honestly um last I think somebody asked me this question last Q&A and I said my Dior book tote but honestly I would choose my Dior saddle bag I don't know what I like about the, the Dior bags. I don't know if it's like the monogram. I love navy. I think, you know, since my clothes are very minimal for the most part, like this is like the perfect amount of like monogram. Um, I love the bag. Um, I don't see anything kind of wrong with it. Like this is a forever bag in my collection. I'm super grateful and super happy that I have it. So um, if this is one bag as of today, probably my Dior saddle bag because I just I love it that much and it's my child I would probably choose my Dior saddle bag and if I were to choose a contemporary handbag I know you just asked one bag but we'll do two 
I would probably go for my Diamond Dover backpack. I wouldn't know if I would go for the small one or for the larger one. Just because the backpack, if it's my laptop, it's a good travel bag, good gym bag, good everything. Like I said, if I want to use it as a laptop bag, I would probably just stick with the larger one. But probably keep a Diamond Dover backpack in my Dior saddle bag as of today but it, it literally changed last video so it's literally what i'm feeling like every single day and that's what i like every single day is i can wake up i can choose whatever i want i can wear whatever i want i can pretty much do whatever i want and that's what's that's what's so beautiful about life and i'm very grateful and, and i feel very very can pretty much do whatever i want and you know nothing is necessarily stopping me but i also have positioned myself in a way where I can do that. How do you know that you want to buy a big ticket item and not have any regret your impulse? So for me, I'm a very indecisive go back and forth person. So once I want something, I buy it and I keep it. So when I bought my Chanel bag right there, I already knew that was something that I wanted since I was a child. So I mentally prepared myself. When I bought it, it was so much money and I, well, I kind of got like a little bit of, you know, oh, that's a lot of money, but I bought it and I loved it and I used it. Same for my book tour for my birthday last year. I bought it, I went to a store in Highland Park. Uh, I literally bought it within the first five minutes of me being there, but I had already looked at it prior. And so I bought it and I, it was a lot of money back then. I mean, it, it was a lot of money before two price increases, but still, fue mucho dinero, but I knew that I wanted it and so i went for it so for me i already know what i want and i try to buy items that if i buy items that you know that i really really like and that i look for so i've always liked the book tote since it came out and so when i bought it i was like you know it's been around for a while i asked the lady like do you think it's a really good purchase like i want to hear on thoughts and opinion like please like you know i want to be super satisfied and she gave me an honest answer and that's why I like certain essays because they're very, very honest with you. And so I bought it, I loved it, and I used it, and well, I still love it. Um, I have made like regrettable purchases. I probably wouldn't have purchased Hermes belt if I could go back in time. Some of my designer t-shirts and like certain shoes. Um, but I think that's always going to happen regardless. Um, if you make sure you want everything, there are always going to be things that will never work out. And that goes with life. Like if you get a job, uh, if you, you know, do get in a relationship, like certain things just won't work out. But I would say like 95% of the times, everything tends to work out within itself. And I know myself pretty well to know something's going to work with my lifestyle. So I would just make sure that you are financially stable to purchase certain items. Don't go into debt buying items. And just make sure it's something that you like and that you're not buying it just because you see it on another person or it's because of a trend. So that's my advice. From YouTube, what is your other jobs and what is your dream job? Probably my dream job is probably to be independent and to probably work for myself now who knows it could be being a full-time youtuber it could be you know doing my whole other things on the side um like my dad has like this side business that um honestly i wouldn't really mind and i would actually would kind of like to take control over it and probably run that business so who knows um what the future will hold but probably if i have to choose a dream job it would honestly be probably like a like a blogger or be like a full-time youtuber and you know the moment that i may have the opportunity to do that i may just jump on it because life is short and siempre te vas a quedarte con las ganas so i may i may say yes so who knows that, that could be something that could happen you know my my channel is double is growing so fast so who knows that could be something that could happen in the future but as of right now um i'm working steadily and i'm doing my thing and i'm working on other things but probably being a youtuber is my dream job ever since i was a child i would watch youtube and it was my escape because i was like nobody else in my school um i got bullied so youtube was like my happy place it was my escape so um i know that's for it for a lot of other people so for me that honestly be be my dream job are your parents or grandparents immigrants if so from where so my so my mom and my dad are from mexico and i'm technically like a first generation here and so my dad is from baja california my mom's from san luis potosi and i have family from all over mexico from uh, distrito federal from guadalajara monterrey um you know everywhere so for me oh querétaro i love 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 querétaro but yeah that's where my parents are from and yeah they are first generation and i'm super grateful um that 
you know, that they are and I learned a lot from them and they told me stories about how they grew up, how they weren't privileged, how my dad had one pair of shoes for like many years and you know, he um you know, they told me stories throughout the years of how their life has went, how they grew up and you know, just I'm just so grateful to be living the life that I am and um just seeing all the sacrifices that they made, especially when I was a child. And I don't wanna get too emotional here. Um it just means a lot to me, so yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, we're gonna move on to the next question, but thank you so much. Next question is are you pregnant? <laughs> I am not pregnant, okay. Question, have I ever been in love? The answer is, I really don't know. I would probably say yes, but then I could also see where I would answer no. Um, the same person also asked me, what is my five-year plan? Um, my five-year plan is to be a homeowner, definitely, and to be financially more secure. And I think that's a goal every single year is to... Um, make sure I'm just even more and more financially secure and I think that's my main priority and to be healthy and happy probably yeah probably financially secure healthy and happy three things other than that I think I'm I'm good and making sure the people that I care about are taken care of within kind of the same route I don't know if you've answered this already but what is your day job um I already talked about that in the car so basically um that's not something that I want to disclose just yet but everything tiene su tiempo so um sooner or later you guys will find out um the next question is what brahmin bags are worth purchasing i love the designs but not sure if they're worth it so for me one thing i really like about brahmin bags is the material that kind of croc type leather um is really well because it's really good because if anything happens you can wipe it off like it is such a durable bag for me i definitely do want to add a brahmin into my collection i think brahmin is a good brand i think they hold up pretty well like brahmin bags don't really look beat up just because of the material so i think if you do get it regardless if you get it on sale or full price i think it is worth the money if you get a nice and core style because of just how the the item is itself like it, that material holds up super super well in my opinion from what i've seen and what i know people having brahmin bags i do think that it is worth the money next one is how do you afford so many luxury items so i get asked this question so much how i get so many items but the thing is i rotate through a lot of items very fast so um i answer i always kind of answer this question throughout videos is i cycle through things so if i don't really like something i get rid of it so um right now i feel like i have a little bit of a lot so i may do like a little purge but i cycle through my items um very fast and i know some people say well you know sergio you you always talk about quality versus quantity but you always you know have a lot but the thing is everything that i have quality so someone else can enjoy it and it's an item that can get passed along so let's say for example this Celine bag that I bought and let's say for whatever reason I love it I'm never I don't think I would ever sell it as of today but let's say like one day I'm bored out of it and I sell it and I you know someone else has it and they use it they take good care of it and then someone else can have it so this is uh like what I mean is like something like this can get used and have multiple lifetimes like some of the things that I bought pre-loved I wonder how many owners it's had especially if it's a thing over 10 years old or how did how did it get find it? Did somebody find it at a thrift store and decide to sell it? Like, I don't know. I think it's kind of, I think that's something that's kind of fun and to kind of think about. But that's how I, that's why I, that's how I afford items. I know what brands go on sale. I know what goes on sale. I know what's worth the money, what's not worth the money. And I cycle through my items pretty fast or um, certain items. But I do have like a lot of core. So I am a YouTube channel. I do want to be here for the long run. So I am investing in a lot of core style handbags. So I can always reference in videos. And I can just kind of have in my collection versus kind of having to pop them up on the screen. But that's how I do it. Next question is, um, I want to see you on TikTok Beach. Um, okay, so I get asked this question a lot. I think I'll make a TikTok. I'm just, I hear a lot of different things about TikTok, how they sue your information, how they don't push certain content. And so it's kind of controversial. So I'm not sure if I want to be on a platform like TikTok. I probably will have to do a little bit more research. And if you guys have any questions about, if you guys have anything about TikTok that I should know, definitely leave it down below because I would love and love and love to hear your opinion about it. Can you do more finance videos, please? Okay, yes, I will be doing more finance videos. Um, this person, Trinity, if you actually want to DM me on Instagram and tell me what videos you personally want to see, definitely let me know because I'm more than happy to even answer your personal questions, but also um, 
like a full-on video I can definitely do that for you but I do have some financial videos on my channel they're not the most watched and the most viewed so that's why I don't really push them a lot to a lot and then also I have um, a very different types of audience to have a good amount that's under 25 and then 25 to 35 and then um, you know 35 to you know 45 see like one of how to finance your money in high school or you know in college or you know what to do with certain things so definitely let me know down below and if, Trinity if you want to DM me on Instagram um, your ideas definitely let me know because it'll be very very appreciated but I love your videos same person Trinity thank you thank you so much I really really appreciate it you're able to afford all of your designer like I said I get it on sale I get a lot of perks in the industry um, I know a lot of people so I do get a lot of perks so that's why you don't really see everything or go shopping for everything is because I do get perks in and out if you know what I mean so um yeah that's how I, I I'm very very grateful to have the relationships and the connections and the things that I have for people like sales associates or behind the scenes so I'm very very thankful for that but that's how I am so I always tell people like don't when you see my bag collection when you see my clothes don't see it as like oh my god I have to have so many bags I have to have this and that like pick and choose what you like and what you appreciate it but I don't want nobody to ever think that you have to have this many bags or this and that like you know like a, not even a, like to keep up or competition like for me like I said I am a YouTube channel if I didn't have have a YouTube channel my collection would be a lot smaller I have like 30 bags it probably would be like maybe 18 but since I have a YouTube channel I like to have certain bags in my collection to kind of reference and to kind of have and I also like using bags and I like to change out my bags every single day but um, I know I get asked this quite a lot but um, don't feel like you have to keep up or anything like me just pick and choose what you like and from me or other content creators and never feel like you have to keep up because you know I get perks, you know, not even like getting things like gifted, but like I get perks with certain discounts and stuff like that, that not everybody has access to or certain sales associates that I get things uh, before anybody else. So I do get perks before other people. So I'm very, very grateful for that. But that's um, never feel like you have to keep up with me or like anybody else on the platform. Um, I would say just everyone stays in their own lane and do you and um, yeah. That's how I'm able, it's just like all the perks that I get and from time to time I do buy full price items like my Dior book. Who or what got you into this chic fashion style you have and love? Um, for me, I'm just very minimalistic and simple. For me, I've always been, you know, my mom would buy me like Tommy Hilfiger clothes and polo and have like a big polo and, you know, she, when up to like I was like teen, 14, she picked out all my clothes and um, for me, I just never really identified like, I don't really like polo being advertised on my shirt um you know there's certain brands that i don't mind getting advertised from like me wearing their items like let's say this lululemon top and has a little lululemon but i like how it's a little bit more discreet i don't really like too much in big things yes i do have like logo bags but i pick and choose what i like but for me um what got me to my style is youtube i love youtube youtube was my happy place whenever i didn't have any friends and i would never hang out with nobody in like junior high and elementary and you know certain times in high school there was like a summer in high school where i had nobody to hang out with and i was literally stuck at home and i would just like be kind of depressed a little bit and so youtube was always my happy place and watching all these youtubers and watching you know these people have styles and showing their bags and you know um their life stories like for me i watched like a lot of people's like how do they start on youtube like oh that's very inspirational and i always thought like oh i could always i always want to be that i want to be that person when i grow up or i want to be something like that so for me i think youtube is what really kind of made me be the style of what i am today and youtube is a platform that i love so much and that's why um i make videos because i i just love youtube so much so i want to say honestly youtube's what really got me into fashion um more than like a person or something it's just youtube in general what was your big first big purchase and did you feel guilty after it um my first big purchase was the coach crossbody that i got when i was like 13 or 14 and no i i when i got it i was so in love and i felt like I could I loved it so much that's the most I've ever spent on anything in my entire life I saved all my money for it and I loved it and I used it and I felt like I deserved it and I felt like I wanted it and I would like you know before I even I think the day before I purchased it I was just like up all night thinking about like oh my god I'm really gonna buy this like I'm so excited and yeah so that's kind of my bit first big purchase like for me like was that coach crossbody and as far as like bigger purchase like 
my car when I bought it. I was like, oh my god, like I need a car. I deserve this car. I worked hard for it. So I bought it. And you know, like my Chanel flat bag is something that I've always wanted. I worked hard for it and I got it. I don't really, really feel guilty because if I work hard for it, um, I feel like I deserve it in a certain way. But then I also can get things for the right reasons and I buy things because I genuinely like them and I want them or I need them. And I just don't buy whatever. Like you won't probably see me like walk into Fendi and pick any Fendi bag. Like that's just not me because that's probably not you know my style so for me I've never really felt guilty about any purchases like I said maybe the book toe because I don't know maybe that's probably the only one that I can think of but after I after I used it I fell in love with it like I used it that exact same day what is your favorite luxury outlet America and in the world so I was actually supposed to go to Bister Village in London but I didn't end up having time to go so I'd probably say that one because I do watch a lot of YouTube videos on Bister Village and in America I would say the best one is in New York and I believe it's called the Woodbury Commons um, premium outlets and in Texas the San Marcos outlets or San Marcos outlets those are the best ones in Texas question is who is your fashion inspiration I have so many people but like Emma Hill is somebody that I follow um, Coco Beauty um, like there's a few of them on my Instagram I always tell people if you want to know who I kind of follow just look through my Instagram list and the few accounts that I follow that are fashion I really take like inspiration from those people choose one contempt brand and one designer brand to wear forever so you said wear so I'm gonna take that as clothing so for designer the row and for contemporary probably um i want to say vince honestly um vince is probably would be the one that i would wear um forever why is fashion so important to you because for me it's like my escape it's something that i could be i can identify i wake up in every morning if i want to wear like kind of workout clothes like i am right now i can if i want to wear a blazer a full suit i can if i want to wear um, you know this or that I can be all logoed out or super clean and minimalistic I can just wake up and I can I, I can identify with the clothing or how I'm feeling so that's why fashion is so important to me and regardless of like the price point regardless of the brand like just me like wearing a, like a tote you know today I'm feeling like wearing a tote that's important to me because that's what carries me through the day and that some has some sort of identity within myself travel during this pandemic the answer is yes I'm actually going on vacation in a couple of days so yes I would um, would you ever come to Chicago I would love to meet you yes I do see myself doing a lot more trips we'll see how this trip goes out and if it does pretty good I'm more I'm open to do more trips in general what do you work in is it fashion related yes it is fashion related but like I said that's probably the most answered question I feel so disappointed for not giving you like an like a re respuesta but um, like I said, todo tiene su tiempo and you guys will see everything eventually, probably sooner than later. And yeah, but thank you, thank you so much for the question. Lab with Danny Dior for a video. So right now I'm not really looking to do collaborations in general. Um, I have no collaborations on my channel in general today. And right now I want to grow my channel by myself organically. I don't really want to have like a push or working with other people. I kind of want to do everything myself, but later in the future, um, I may be open to do more kind of collaborations with other youtubers the question is how can you afford some of the luxury items that you that are so expensive do you budget your money yes yeah, so usually how I do it is whatever I make through all my multiple streams of income the month prior will determine my lifestyle for the next month so certain money goes into savings certain things goes to like paying the insurance paying a phone bill doing certain things so after i'm kind of done with you know all my bills and everything um i see how much money i have to play with and some months it's a lot sometimes it's a little bit less there's certain months where i put certain money into other investments just to other things or to savings accounts like it always changes from month to month but yes at the at the end of the day i do budget my money but everything fluctuates because um in certain things i make let's say three thousand dollars and then that next month i can make you know 22 so it all it fluctuates so much so um i always have a month performance was prior throughout everything determines the type of lifestyle so you know sergio we can't be shopping as much you can shop a little bit more so so and so so that's how i kind of do it but i still save money and i still kind of you know budget and kind of know like what my means are and when i need to stop shopping is when i need to stop shopping or going out and buying drinks or whatever it is um so i kind of i, I kind of 
know my limits within myself. Um, next question is, what would your dream date be? Um, I'm not really sure. For me, like, I'm in, like, self-discovery mode, so there's a lot of awesome guys. There are people that always reach out and are always really nice and sweet, but right now, I'm not really looking for anything in particular because I've done that before where I do go out and I give people attention, but at the end of the day, I just end up, like, I hate to say this, but, like, blowing them off, and it has nothing to do with them. It's more myself, like... I'm in social discovery mode, like, I like how no one's blowing up my phone, I like how I can travel, I can do this without explaining myself with no explanation, and I don't like nothing kind of holding me down, I don't have children, everything in my family is, like, fine, like, I don't have, like, a relationship, um, I, you know, I can pretty much pick up and kind of do everything, um, whenever I kind of want to, obviously there's limitations to that, so that's, like, the question, my dream date, um, honestly would be something very relaxed, like, Yes, I like to go to like expensive restaurants, but honestly, I'm just like I'm just like a person like like whatever like we can literally go and get some street tacos and literally sit down on the concrete floor. Like I literally did that when I went to London, or I even do that sometimes. I go to this place in um, Oak Cliff called LCI and it's like tacos. I will literally get my tacos and I'll eat it on the concrete floor. Like that doesn't bother me. Like. I'm not picky, like, I'm not super old this, like, it could be honestly anything. We could literally go to, literally go grab a cup of coffee and, like, sit down and have a conversation for four hours. Like, I'm not, like, super picky, like, it has to be this day, it has to be that, blah, blah, blah. I'm just, like, very relaxed. Like, I always dress up regardless, so if I'm going to go get street tacos, best to believe I'm going to be dressed to the nines. But, um... Honestly, my dream date would be, as long as my dream date would honestly be the, per the person arrives on time. If the person invites me, they're paying. If I invite, I'm paying. And we just have a good time. And it's somebody that I like and that I would want to kind of get to know a little bit more. But as far as dream, I'm just not really picky at all. Like, um, it could be at the most expensive restaurant or it could be a hole in the wall or, you know, a small business restaurant. Like, it, it doesn't really matter. I'm not really picky. Just like you tell me a, t a time and a place and I will be there. And that's pretty much how I am. And I feel like that's why I get along with a lot of people. It's just because I'm a people's person, but I also, I'm not really picky. I'm not, yes, I have standards and stuff like that. And sometimes people do take my kindness for weakness, but for the most part, I'm just like a really relaxed person. What characteristics do you look for? Next question is, what characteristics do you look for in a partner? My camera's dying, so this is like literally the perfect time. So, characteristics are somebody who's honest, someone who has integrity, who has a really great relationship with themselves, who accepts themselves and knows themselves. I don't date people that are, or I don't date to people, I don't talk to people that are you know don't know themselves don't know what they want i like people to know what they want like i just graduated college i'm looking for something a little bit more serious i'm looking for something more ca casual like i just like people that are straight up honest have integrity have morals have values that carry themselves a certain way um there's a lot of people that are very nice and very sweet but they don't carry them certain ways if you post pictures on instagram or on social media you know showing it all off or you know captioning or you know if you don't present yourself a certain way um online or in person or whatever it is um i'm not really interested the little the small little details for me within my virgo kind of bothers me so for me it's just somebody that's clean cut classic um knows what they want integrity values has high self-respect for themselves treats others with respect and treats everybody the same so for me that's how what that's what i look for and it's kind of like myself kind of like you know relaxed but knows kind of how to do everything like you will never probably see me you will never see me act like a fool on social media go off on people clap back on people because for the most part um that's just not something that a class a classy person would do or a sophisticated and elevated person would do so um i would expect the same